Young people are consistently told that they are going to be the leaders of tomorrow. But let me tell you, that is absolutely not true. Thanks to exponential technologies, free and easy access to information, and global connectivity, young people are becoming the leaders of today. So first, what are these technologies that are allowing youth to make these monumental strides in fields that have been dominated by PhDs and experts for over a century? The first technology is synthetic biology. And what that is, synthetic biology is really reprogramming the software for life. So students are no longer programming computers in zeros and ones. They're programming life in A's, T's, C's, and G's. But what does that really mean? Let's put this in context of a global issue that we all face today, which is obesity. And obesity comes down to a simple software bug of our body. Evolving in the savannas of Africa, we'd only get meals every so often. So in order to survive, our bodies would need to store all of those nutrients from that meal to get on to the next meal. Today, we live in a society with a McDonald's and a Burger King around every corner, but our body doesn't know that. It still thinks we're back on those planes, and it still thinks we need to keep all those excess nutrients, and that leads to obesity. But what if I told you that you could reprogram your body to let it know that even though you had a large lunch, it shouldn't worry because you're going to have an even bigger dinner? Today, 16-year-olds are able to do that. So next time you're worried about taking that next slice of cheesecake, don't worry, that one will be on us. The next technology is 3D printing. Before, if you ever wanted to manufacture the first stages of an idea, it would take hundreds of thousands to even millions of dollars to come up with your first prototype. But today, students can hammer out as many prototypes as they want in their bedroom for only a few dollars with 3D printing. You can use over 200 different kinds of materials from glass to plastic to even titanium. It's being used in the rocket space industry to build rocket ship engines. The cool thing is that the cost of complexity is basically zero, because it costs the same to build a block as it does to build a same size block with over 1,000 moving parts. The next technology is something that's been on the exponential curve for quite a while, and that is the processing power of the average household computer. So today, the average household computer has more processing power than the largest supercomputers 20 years ago. As many of you may know, IBM recently developed Watson, a supercomputer that was able to beat two of the world's best Jeopardy players at their own game. That was over two years ago. Today, Watson is being used in the medical field, and it's actually better at diagnosing cancer than human doctors are. What job will Watson take next? Within a decade, all of that technology will fit on the average household's computer. Not only that, but that computer will think and act at the same rate as the human brain. It will learn just as you and I do. 20 years from now, that same average household computer will have the processing power of all of the brains of humanity combined. Can you imagine the power of over 7 billion minds combined and connected in one place? If nothing else, it'll make my homework a little bit easier. The next factor helping youth is access to information. Today, a member of the Maasai tribe in Africa has access to more information at their fingertips than Bill Clinton did as president. That smartphone device that we all have in our pockets has more processing power than it took to humanity to put a man on the moon. We can fit libraries of books in the palm of our hands. Top scientific research journals that only the best university had access to are free and easy to get to all online. It's this access to information that helps students like my good friend Jack Andreka to develop one of the world's first and best early diagnostic for pancreatic cancer that costs under a nickel. He was only 15 years old. It's this access to information that allowed students like my other good friend Catherine Wong to develop a mobile ECG that can wirelessly transmit signals from your heart 
to healthcare professionals to instantly analyze. She was only 16. Together, Jack, Catherine, and I are determined to win the Qualcomm Tricorder X Prize and help the billions of people who this would affect. The third factor helping youth is global connectivity. Today, there are two billion people online. Within a decade, that number will rise by more than five billion, which means that five billion new people will have access to online resources. Five billion new minds are able to share their ideas. So a brilliant farmer from Malaysia is now able to share his new farming technique with farmers in Africa and in India and China, making a global impact. He's no longer restricted to just a small community. And these five billion people are going from consumers of information to producers of new ideas. Can any of you imagine a global challenge big enough that seven billion minds together cannot solve? But let's take a step back and think about it. Really, everybody has access to this technology, this information, and this connectivity. But what is it about youth that allows them to exploit it in a way that has never been seen before? Well, it really comes down to our brain, and it's actually the most modern part of our brain to have developed. It's called the neocortex. The neocortex is what distinguishes us from all other mammals, and it's really what makes us human. At its base function, it's a pattern-matching device. Evolving, again, in the savannas of Africa, it needs to be a pattern-matching device in order to survive. Today, for better or for worse, this still happens. So adults learn to match a problem to a solution. So when they see a similar problem, they look at what's been done before and incrementally improve upon this problem. This creates really linear change. But the thing about youth is that they never had these connections in the first place. They were able to come up and look at what's been done and what's never been done before and come up with radical new ideas to solve some of the world's biggest problems. So if you haven't been innovative or you haven't been disruptive, don't feel bad, blame your brain. And one more piece of advice. Next time you're feeling the urge to discipline your child, just remember, it might be their new, their brilliant and innovative idea that will be the next billion dollar company that you're working for. Are you ready?